All right, well, so let's uh, kick the tires, light the fire as you're listening to the Launch Network, guys, and Carmine Danisco with Reality Is. How's it going out there? I have my co-host, Mr. Mark Portney. Mark, what's going on, my friend? Nothing much, Carmine. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. We've got some really cool stuff happening. You know, we've been talking with Brian, and uh, you guys got a lot of cool stuff going down, right? Yeah, no, we got we got a we got a ton of cool stuff. I, I'm uh, we're going to be uh, sharing a whole bunch of great stuff today. But um, you know, I just want to I just want to mention one thing. You know, uh, I saw you looking at me, Carmine, and uh, why I'm so handsome. And I know you're thinking about it, but I just want to I just want to let you know that I finally got the balls to let my wife cut my hair. So uh, <laughs> that's what happened. I couldn't take it anymore, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to go to. I'm not going to the barber shop. That's for sure. And uh, she's been on me and on me, and finally I let her cut it. She did a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought that you, you, well, you're the guy, you took the flow beat to, to market, right? Well, of course. That was number one. And number two, uh, she, put, she was going to put a cereal bowl on my head. And put a <laughs> but um, I said, uh, no, let's just do it free form. You know what I mean? That's but cool. call mine. Look who I'm talking to. You need a haircut. Like, uh, I need a third testicle. You Dude, know I, I get mean? a haircut every morning. I'm in the shower and I shave. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay. done, man. That's, a, right, that's a, every right. day. <laughs> what about that? Uh, what about your cohort? What about your cohort, Brian? What's he been up to? I know oh, that Brian, he. What have you been up to? He, he had to jump off. He said he'd be right back. So what? It's a good time for us to make fun of him. Oh, now let's talk about him. Let's oh talk yeah. Some shit about him. Oh, there um, he is. He's back. Is, is he back? Yeah, bro. Where'd you go, man? You back? Brian, can you hear us? No, he's uh. Looks like he's, yeah, he's, uh, uh, what, what, f- he's going to call in. What, what you're going to call in. No. All That's right, okay. No problem. Anyway, there he goes. So, um, yeah. So what else you got going on? I know that, um, you know, you are you guys allowed out now with the pandemic's kind of over? Not really. I mean, uh, you got to stay safe. They're slowly, but surely opening up. I mean, things are starting to open, but there's still no restaurants and stuff like that. No hair salons i.e. my wife cutting my hair but um you know slowly but surely we're getting uh, we're getting back into it so yeah. uh you know what's happening down in florida anything um no you know you know Fl- florida is a weird state man we've been uh, we've been slowly opening up we got all the businesses pretty much going on i was at the gym today uh finally really uh yeah yeah it's, uh, but you know there was no way there but um, which is good in a way. Uh, but you know, I feel bad for all those big gyms, right, Mark? I mean, it's crazy. Those I heard huge you guys. Gyms. I heard you guys were eating in restaurants down there. Yeah. Like it's, oh yeah. Are yeah. you? You can eat in. Yeah, you can eat in. But what they're doing is they're um, in some of the main areas. Uh, they're closing down the streets and they're letting these restaurants set up tables outside, right on the road, right in the streets, man. Wow. So that's gonna that's gonna lead us right into what we're talking about today. Because if everybody's back in business, they need to save as much money as they possibly can. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, why don't I, why don't I introduce Chris? Oh yeah. Yeah. We got Chris on this, right? Chris, what's happening, yeah. man? Hey guys, how are you? So let me, uh, let me do a, let me just uh, give him a quick intro. Um, Chris has been on before, so he's a veteran of reality is, and, um, he is the co-founder and the chief operating officer of uh, swipe for free. That's swipe, the number four, and free.com. And uh, the last time he was on, he was talking about uh, people being laid off and people not having jobs. And what Chris was showing everyone and telling everyone is that you can have an unbelievable job, whether it's a side hustle and you're making recurring income, or if you want to do it full time and make some real fuck you money. Um, And he did it from the side of if you wanted to do this as um, as an occupation. Right. So today we're going to do it from a little bit of a different angle. I'm going to talk today to all of the people that own a business. I don't care if it's a pizza parlor or a restaurant, a car dealership, a, a multi-million dollar company. If you take credit cards and you swipe credit cards, this podcast is for you. Yeah. There's no cost to get involved. And it's just it's an incredible, incredible opportunity. I hope I didn't take too much of your uh, of your thunder, Chris. But how you doing today? Good, good, good. Um, you know, considering the pandemic and the you know the devastation to let's put it in personal life and business, of course, uh, in a in a in a positive light. Obviously, this is driving 
a ton, a ton of business owners to, to the Swipe for Free platform. Um, you know, if, if it wasn't, uh, the, I, I call this the straw that broke the camel's back for the business owners. Uh, prior to this, it was already super difficult to be profi profitable, um, to stay in business. Um, and now with this, I mean, merchants are going to need uh, as much support and have financial help as they possibly can get. So, so Swipe for so Free me, is thriving. Yeah. Let me make this, let me make this shit simple. Okay. I'm listening to this podcast and I have a restaurant. I have a pizza place. I have, you pick any business. So I've got a restaurant. How do I get involved with Swipe for Free, Chris? Make it as, as simple as possible. What do I do first? What do I have to do? So first of all, you go to swipe the number four free dot com. Always the four. Okay, swipe for free. Uh, you know, you go to the home page. There's tons of information that I'm gonna get uh, to speak about today um, to explain to you really how amazing the program is and how simple it is to incorporate and use. And then uh, you fill out the contact form. That's that's one way. And one of my senior account analysts will reach out to you right away. Or you can go old school and email us at save s a v e at swipe the number four free.com or you can go even old school and call 888-704-1181 again 888-704-1181 all right that's that's the contact um but uh mark if you want me to paint the the best and most simple picture that i can of how a transaction goes down um i i can i can do that i want to i want to just know that what what is the what is the pizza place going to expect so they say to you chris this is the, the greatest thing. Tell me, tell me what this is. They, they charge the customer the 4% fee, but really start at the very beginning because if somebody didn't, if somebody didn't want to have a secondary hustle or a job, they may have clicked off because they didn't need one. They've got a job, but they do own pizza places or restaurants or what have you. So what, is, what does it mean from the beginning? So a customer comes in and then we'll talk about objections and things like that that you can you can kind of speak to or what they're going to be expecting. Yes. So guys, the way credit card processing works, if you're a merchant listening or better, you know, either way, you're, you're just a person that uses a credit and debit card like the whole planet does. Um, what people don't understand is that the merchant pays fees to accept your credit and debit cards. Okay. Those fees can be in some low cases is two and a half. That's if it's super smart, educated merchant all the way up to four to five percent you know that's what the typical merchant pays so when you walk into a business guys and you buy something all right and you buy a pair of sneakers for a hundred bucks just an example the merchant doesn't receive a hundred bucks the merchant is going to pay say three four or five percent let's round to three percent they're going to receive ninety seven dollars when you buy that hundred dollar pair of sneakers now why are they getting ninety seven is because they are paying for all of those beautiful rewards and airline points and all that good fun stuff that we all enjoy as credit card users, they're paying for that, not the card companies, okay? So when you see these commercials, hey, uh, uh, Capital One Ventures doing three and a half percent of cash back, and then Chase Sapphire is dropping 3.7, it's a battle amongst them to grab the end user, the consumer to use them, but out of the merchant's pockets. So it's fun for them to, to fight these battles, but the question is, at what point are they gonna stop? At what point will these rewards reach a limit, four, five, six, seven percent? So at the end of the day, very simple. Rather than you buying something in a business and then uh, the merchant paying 3%, when a customer now walks in, okay, you will have signage explaining to them that all of the prices in your business are currently cash prices, like a gas station, like a, a cash cost per gallon, right? Now, if they're gonna opt to pay with credit or debit card, they're going to not enjoy the cash discount price, the cash price listed, and there will be a change in price of 4%, a non-cash charge, you're not paying cash. Same idea as a gas station. Cash price is lower per gallon than a credit and debit card price per gallon, because the merchant has to pay fees to accept that card. So when you yeah. pull out that, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I was just gonna say, the, I have to tell you, I owned retail. And when I looked at my credit card bills and I thought I was paying 3% as a merchant, okay? I thought I was paying 3%. 
I, I, when I saw that 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 fucking statement, it it had analysis fee on it. It had a per cash, fifteen cents per. I mean, so when when they look at their real rates, could some of these guys be paying six and seven percent based upon? And they sit there telling you, no, I'm good. I'm paying three percent. So so Mark, one very important thing is that merchants pay different fees daily and then different fees monthly. So at the end of the month, actually the first business day of the next month, you will receive a deduction from your credit card processing company. You assume that's the total fees you paid, but what's also happening is that on a daily level, as you're batching your sales, you're also paying fees. So it's the combination of the two, which you are able to add and then divide and get your true what they call effective rate, which is the percentage you're paying. So a lot of merchants don't understand it's the combination of the two, which exceeds typically three, four percent. That's without all of the junk fees that come in throughout the year, annual fees, PCI, all these things that you're, you, you, your merchants look at and they're like, what the hell is this? That's on top of that. So when you blend this whole picture together, you're breaking the four or five percent uh, numbers. Okay. So, so let's so let's cut all the bullshit. I'm going to say a statement, and the only thing you're allowed to tell me is true or false. Okay. I go into a, a merchant and I say to them, "What what were your credit card fees last year?" They tell me forty thousand dollars, and I tell them, "I'm going to take the forty thousand. Let's stop talking about everything else. I'm going to take the forty thousand, and I'm going to put it right back in your pocket. No analysis fees, no horse shit. True or false?" That's exactly what we do. True. Okay. That's all I need to know. So, yeah. um, so what about the machinery? Well, how, what do they have to do? Let's say they have existing machinery. How do they get the swipe for free stuff? So, I mean, at, at the end of the day, we have the technology fit for every business type. So if it's as simple as a plug-in telephone cable or IP uh, terminal, you know, Ethernet, excuse me, we have those. If you want to go uh, even more simple, you want to use a swiper. Everybody in the industry, well, most consumers identify it as Square. Square is just a company that manufactured their own swiper. That is not, they don't own all swipers. We all provide swipers. So those little Bluetooth, some still old school plug-in in the ear jack of the phone, we provide that for little simple business types. Um, we go to wireless terminals, which work off of uh, AT&T and T-Mobile SIM cards for those. I'm just going to throw deliveries and food trucks and, and cool stuff like that. Tow trucks, service industry, right? And then we go all the way up to POS systems. So if you're a merchant and you're listening and you're saying, man, I, I bought this 50, 60, $100,000 micro system 10 years ago, eight years ago when I opened my beautiful restaurant down where Carmine's living like a king in Florida, okay? We can integrate with 90% of systems. Okay, as long as they're not locked and they're, you know, uh, proprietary and owned by that company, we are able to integrate bringing that non-cash charge into the system, passing it on to the consumer and eliminating uh, a merchant. Now, one big thing, guys, as you know, um, e-commerce right now, let's all of us, we've all ran onto the Internet, right? We don't want to go shopping in a store. We've uh, if uh, we weren't already doing it, we are. Let's <laughs> there's a reason Amazon stock and and everybody's doing great, okay, uh, is because we are, we've become an online shopping uh, addicted country, right? So with that, we can integrate with your shopping cart so that when you're checking out, it goes, it adds a convenience fee. The language is just different, right? And it adds a convenience fee to the, end, to the consumer and the merchant in that environment then doesn't pay anything. Um, and even, guys, right now, medical, Right in New York, dentist offices are, are trying to, to start to open, chiropractors, um, ophthalmologists, all these people, and they're tired of paying fees on deductibles, right? Uh, why are they paying on the $40, $60 deductible fees when they're doing you a value-added service by accepting your card in the first place? Or even in a different environment where it's, uh, you know, my wife just went and did two veneers. I almost had a heart attack when I saw the charge, but technically, you know, why, why would he accept, if he's accepting my credit card, he's, he's given me a convenience, right? Because typically he should want cash or check, but if he's taking my card, he should charge me to, to accept that convenience for me. So well, Mark, I think, I'm, I'm sorry. 
No, no, I just, uh, I, I, lo I love where you're going with this. I mean, plastic surgeons, there's no medical insurance for elective surgery. So uh, uh, somebody gets a new pair of boobs. I mean, and then they just plunk down this monster credit card. It's $15,000. I mean, th that doctor or $20,000, that doctor's paying 800 bucks or something. Uh, like, because, because to give that customer or patient a convenience, it doesn't make sense to me at all. What does make sense is if you swipe $20,000, you're gonna get $20,000. And, and the customer is gonna pay for the cash uh, back. The customer is gonna pay for the airline miles. That makes to me all the sense in the world. But I just wanna take this conversation in a little bit of a different, uh, a little bit of different direction. And I don't want to pee in your Cheerios, but being, I was a merchant, okay? I was that guy. And if I looked at this thing, yes, it would be unbelievable to get all my cards back. I mean, all my, all my fees back. Amazing. I mean, it's the second biggest bill that you have behind your rent. So I, I get it. But what if, you know, what if I said to you, but I'm going to lose customers. If I, if I charge my customers 4%, I'm going to lose customers. What, what am I, what am I going to do then, big shot? Yeah, I, did we lose him? We lost him, Carmine, I think. No? Chris? You back? I was muted. Hey, Chris, you there? He might have. Uh, he might be dialing in, but uh, yeah, Mark, that is a good question. Why? Why Chris is? Yeah, uh, I'm here. No, I just thought, oh, you know okay. the way the way. Yeah, the way I, this... I'm losing Mark. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I got yeah, you. Mark. I got... Mark's connection's horrible. Really? Hmm. It was. It sounded yeah, great. Mark, on my end. I heard. I heard Cheerio. I heard Cheerio and another couple of yeah. things. I got hungry. Wow. Yeah. What okay. about now? Can you hear me better? Mm -hmm. Yep. Now yeah. you're clear. Okay. So, Carmine, can we edit this out? Can edit out the nonsense. Yeah, we can. We okay. certainly can. So anyway, but what I was saying is this is amazing. It's unbelievable. And and being a merchant, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. You're Something breaking up again. You're breaking up. I don't, I don't know what the fuck's going on. That's weird, because, Mark, I can hear you great. Yeah. And I call now in. I, That's why I, I always call in for this reason. I use it. Because I'm using Zoom the, sucks. I'm using, I'm using. Nope. So, Chris, this sounds, Chris, this sounds amazing, right? But I was a merchant. I owned retail, and uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's an amazing, amazing thing to get back all your credit card fees. But one of the things I would ask you, if you brought it to me back in the day, and you're talking about many moons ago, but what if I lose customers? What if I'm charging the customer 4% and they get pissed off and I lose customers? Okay, so um, first things first, we have over 25,000 merchants on this platform, and we see less than 1% convert back to the traditional way of accepting cars, which means that basically the guidelines and the signage that we put in place at the point of sale, explaining to the consumer, uh, exactly of why they've implemented a cash discount, it has been successful. What we do is our sales representatives is we tell, it's always good to tell the management or the people behind the counter exactly why they had to implement a cash discount program. Okay, guys? And it's as simple as, as explaining, look, our expenses have shot up, okay? It is very expensive for us to accept credit and debit card payments. Rather than raising all of our prices, right across the board, four, five, six percent, and really, uh, you know, hurting you, we've imp implemented this cash discounting program. And what that simply means, guys, is this. As a customer using credit and debit, you're rewarded, right? But why is it that the cash paying customer is never rewarded, right? Why is it that if I want to come in and use cash, why don't I do it? Because even though it's inconvenient and everything else, I have no reward and no reason to have to or want to pay in cash. But how about this? If you gave me the option to save on cash, right, which is rewarding me now, I would actually probably pay cash sometimes. Now, I know this is going against what I do for a living with Swipe for Free, but hey, guess what? If I can help the merchant increase cash sales and stay in business through this horrible time, I'm still happy. But ultimately, let's use, and I always, I guys, I'm a broken record with the gas station. But how many of us pay cash at the gas station 
even though it's, I don't know, 10 cents. The funniest part is I can't even tell you the difference because I'm already mentally pre-programmed to pay credit or debit for the convenience. But guess what? I have some relatives that pay cash because it irks them to pay the 10 cents more per gallon. So guys, you're giving the consumer the ability to save money if they pay with cash helping you because they don't cost you anything and rewarding them, but they have to understand and they do, by the way, that in this current economy, with this pandemic especially, they have no choice but to pass those fees on to you, the end user, because they just can't afford to accept it. And then rather than raising their prices across the board, they want to continue to keep that pricing to you because customers are already comfortable and pre-programmed to know your prices, especially your loyal customers, right? Your loyal okay, customers so come in. And they know the pricing. So forget about so forget about raising my prices. Why don't I just do what you do? I put a four percent fee on and go. It's a, it's called a Mark Portney fee. How about that? <laughs> well, first of all, uh, for compliance purposes, you cannot just add a fee. Okay, you can't just verbalize, "Hey, Joe, it's ten dollars and forty cents." No, that is completely against all of the card brand and laws rules. You have to have the technology which we provide to show the additional line item on the receipt that has the non-cash charge. It has to be capped at 4%. Guys, if anybody's doing over 4%, that's no good, no bueno, right? So you need us to provide that technology. Now, let's get away from technology and compliance for a moment. You just, you just want to do it, right? You just want to say whatever you want to verbalize. You want to say, hey, you're paying credit card, you're going to pay an extra four, right? But at the end of the day, you're still paying fees. So you still have to wake up every morning and check your bank deposit, check your batch deposit, just still see if your processor's playing with you, raising your rates. So what are you really solving? You're not giving yourself a better quality of life that we provide, which means when you wake up, you have a clean deposit with no fees, no debits out of your account. Guys, if you're like me, you hate people rattling around in your bank accounts, okay? The processors have this, uh, this power where they're like, oh, ACH, charge, right? I find that so uncomfortable. I don't like anybody debiting my bank. That's why I pay if I do with credit card, because I have that safety. Guys, do you use your debit card to buy things? You're always scared because if you have to dispute, it's a big process. So you don't want, you want to wake up and you want to know that if you batch $1,040, you have $1,000. Not that you have 970 and you collected that night from the people themselves, the 40 bucks. There's no tracking. There's no organization. With us, it's funny. we it's funny simplify when everything. I, yeah. when, when I was asking the question, I, was, uh, I almost answered my own question because <laughs> at the beginning, we said, I'm paying 3%. So if I add three percent, but but the blended charges could be as high as six or seven percent because of the per. So with you, you're like uh, you're like a sleeping pill. If I sign up for swipe for free, you just go to sleep, man. It's all good. You you swipe a thousand, you get a thousand. It's unbelievable. So when somebody's adding three percent or four percent, they have no clue that there's probably still two or three percent still rattling around in there that they don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah, and I think it's also much more convenient to kind of use us as a scapegoat, right? You know, you don't want to be the, you, you want to say, hey, uh, I'm using this company, Swipe for Free, they're eliminating the fees. You know, um, we needed the service in order to survive and things like that. And you're kind of taking it off of yourself when you're verbalizing, hey, well, we decided uh, it's uh, 1040, right? Where's your signage? Where's the additional line item explaining to the customers? You know, I was reading a blog the other day about these merchants adding these COVID surcharges, okay? And they're getting a lot of backslash. And you know what most of the consumers are saying, right? Why didn't you tell us? Why isn't there signage? Why are you just sneaking it on? Why are you just adding this crap wherever you want on the receipt? On our receipts, right, if you go to the website, it is clear and it's, this, it's perfect and smooth and it, it is a non-cash charge. This COVID surcharge crap, is not a good look, guys. It is not nice to the consumers. Okay, a non-cash charge makes perfect sense. You're not paying in cash. You're costing us money. Okay, you're going to pay the non-cash charge. Now, Mark, one big thing, right? Uh, I saw this great interview the other day on MSNBC where a merchant, okay, in Michigan, uh, not only did she own a beautiful beauty salon, but she 
but she also is in charge of a beauty salon association. All right. And she asked the panel of uh, some, some, some billionaires or some very wealthy guys who are supposed to be industry experts in, in, in saving money and being effective. And she said to them, the exact line that I feel summarizes the average American business right now. She says, hey, I'm about to open up and I already know that my business is going to be significantly down. Okay, not only because customers don't even know I'm open or they're scared shitless to come in, but I also have to practice social distancing in my business. So even if my capacity is 20 people, I can only have five. So those, those things are dramatically dropping your typical business flow, right? Now, guess what? Guys, you see all this right here? PPE, all right? I have the added expense, as, uh, the same way she does, to provide masks, to provide gloves, to provide hand sanitizing stations, okay? So she's saying this to this panel, I have so much new expenses, my cost of goods have been going up, guys. It's, things are going up. The shipments are delayed, manufacturing is delayed, it's a big mess. So she asked this panel, keyword, she says, the credit card processing fees, guys, have been adding up, I pay like twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 a year, and she asked the biggest question ever, how do I get rid, not lower, get rid of my credit card processing fees? And the panel gives her the advice to go to the big, you know, big corporate answer, go to the big corporate shops, right? Which we all know the names and ask them to reduce your rates. Okay. Worst advice ever. They're not going to reduce your rates because, uh, they're a corporate structure business. It's either you pay this, 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 or that, okay? And I realized that these corporate guys and the industry is unaware that we exist. So the merchants don't know we exist. Guys, I, I, you know, we're not the biggest industry in the world. We're a relatively new industry, okay? So we are slowly getting out there and we need to educate these merchants how they can get rid of, not lower, get rid of their credit card processing fees okay chris i read i read that article and it was it was kevin o'leary okay kevin o'leary who's one of the most uh he he's a brilliant financial mind and he's got a, a you know all of these unbelievable financial companies and it was amazing to me to see a guy of that prowess to not have this tool in his bag. To me, that was unbelievable. He said to her, go to the big companies and try to get some money down and try to, that's like pissing on a bonfire. Okay. We're in, we're in the, we're in the situation where businesses are downturning. These people need to get rid of their credit card fees, not ask for $3 and 50 cents a month off because you might as well not make the fucking call. Okay. How does, how does a merchant get in, get in touch and start Swipe for free? How, do, how does that happen? So again, you go to www.swipe4free.com. There's a, there's a contact form. You fill, you fill it out. We'll, you know, we'll be in touch with you ASAP, all right? Or if you want to email, it's save, you know, because that's what we do here. We save. We save at, save at swipeforfree.com. Or again, you can just call in 888-704-1181. All right? And, so I... And, I I hear this and it's, I hear this, sorry to cut you off. I hear this and it's unbelievable to me. I own a pizza shop. What do I need to have ready? I'm, I want to get this shit on my books as quickly as possible because if I pay one more credit card fee, I'm going to scream. What do I need to have ready to sign up? What should a merchant be ready with to get so, you to go? So you, so you always need, obviously, uh, your, your, your driver's license or government ID to prove you're real and it's your business, and you need a void of check because obviously the most important thing it is that we have to do is to get you those credit, that credit and debit card processing. Uh, other than that, it is the most basic questions. Uh, when you fill out the contact form, you, you're, when you give us your name, your email, and your phone number, you're pretty much uh, 50, 60% done because uh, once the representative reaches out, he's going to explain everything, he or she's going to explain everything to you. And then uh, that's it. You provide a voided check to prove banking, you know, routing, mm -hmm. and uh, that it's you. It's really your business. We do our due diligence, underwriting, and all the good stuff to confirm. And within 48 hours, you're up and running with the Swipe for Free platform and the software. So, so it's Wednesday. You're telling me by Friday I'm swiping my balls off? You are going to start uh, putting some either, you know, you're going to have some, uh, some new income 
starting on uh, Saturday morning when you, when you batch and you get that clean deposit. Yeah, you could start uh, start planning to buy some toys, Mark. I'm sure you uh, want to buy a yacht or something cool. Well, I'm sick. Of, I'm sick of the fucking credit card fees. I could tell you that. Uh, Brian, you're the smartest guy in the room. What do you think? Yeah. So, Chris, one question I have. We're talking about pizzerias and retail and, and you know, kind of consumer good type of, of businesses. What about service based businesses? Yeah. So uh, it's funny. And I'll use my own personal examples. Um, my own home uh, where, where I, you know, landscapers, by the way, that that industry is thriving. The home, you know, renovations, pools. Uh, landscapers, my guys are cranking because since there's absolutely nothing to do, okay, you have a lot of people are saying, let me, let me hook up my backyard. Let me give myself a be better, me and my family, a better quality of life at home. So I am signing up left and right, the landscapers and the pool guys and, and, the, and the contractors and everybody. Because again, guys, that is an industry that as a consumer of them, you're already pre-programmed to pay with check or cash, right? So think about it. It's actually a convenience now, especially economically right now, to be able to ride the credit card cycling, right? If I can put my $7,000 a year landscaping cost on a card and figure it out later, but the only thing is I have to pay for my own rewards and crap, right, that I get on top of the float, it's a great choice for me in this current economy, right? So I think those guys get the value of accepting cards. Also, no more bounce checks, no more chasing people for, for, for invoicing. Hey, it's been 30 days. Hey, it's been 60 days. Guess what? You want me to landscape you? You know, you want me to take care of your pool? Pull out that card. The only difference is you're going to pay that fee, but you're going to ride, right, the credit card uh, terms, a year, six months, whatever you want to do. So that gives the consumer also the ability to enjoy that in such a, in such a horrible financial time, guys. It's really not good, you know? It's a hundred, he's a hundred percent right. Could you imagine being his landscaper, man? You show up, uh, you show up uh, to to the house, and he's banging you for swipe for free. Could you imagine? Yeah, that shit? seriously. Oh, I, what do you, what do you mean? I'm I, I'm a consumer of myself. I mean, I pay my own fees because I obviously I understand, you know, the convenience of it. So so guys, that industry is huge right now. Okay, that the whole servicing world, um, the medical world as they're reopening. It is huge. Okay. E-commerce we spoke about is huge. Um, but, but guys really, you know, I'm going to get into, you know, restaurants right now, man, restaurants. Okay. Guys, my supermarket grocery merchants have exploded what, with credit card processing volume, right? So for them, it's a positive conversation to eliminate their fees because they're doing so well, right? So they're making all this extra. What happens is, is that the consumers that normally like us would go out to restaurants and go to bars and all that have shifted to where? To the supermarkets, to the grocery stores, to the liquor stores, right? So on that side, they're saving and we're helping them and they love us. On the other side, the restaurants need us. It's not a matter of, oh, great, this is awesome. I'm going to make all this extra money. It's called, I need to stay alive. I need to stay in business. I'm reopening hopefully soon. And I'm down 70%. I got PPE out of the, my ass, okay, expenses, and I need money now. And that savings is instant. Guys, it is a daily savings. It's not, oh, you got to wait a week, a month to enjoy. You start saving that moment. These people, these guys need a push. They need help because their business has transferred to another industry, right? I think they did a study where the stimulus money 65 or 70 percent of it went instantly to food to supermarkets to grocery to you know all my buddies that own fish markets and, and and butcher shops they're all doing really well my friends that have meat distribution companies to big restaurants have switched to the consumer they've taken the product from the restaurant owner down to the end user consumer right they're rebuilding their businesses guys if you didn't restructure your business right now a little bit, it's hard to survive. So anyway, back to, to the reality is, I love your name, guys, is if you're a restaurant owner, you're a person that's suffering, you use this program to stay afloat, to stay in business. If you're doing really well, God bless you, you're very lucky, you use this to make more money, okay? That's the two angles. And Chris, for, for your restaurants and, and some of the retail, what, what are you guys doing in response to, you know, keeping customers and employees safe? 
That's, Brian, amazing, amazing question. So, guys, I know I probably, you know, yapped enough about how great the savings is, right, eliminating. But we don't stop there. Contactless payments right now, right, the ability to accept, uh, you know, uh, uh, Apple Pay, Google Wallet, Android Pay, and all this technology, you need a certain type of terminal or pin pad to accept this in order to keep your staff safe, right, and your customers feeling safe. So you need particular equipment. We provide contactless equipment. I think uh, the, the CEO of MasterCard recently said that contactless transactions have gone up two or 300% because nobody wants to hand their card off to, to, to somebody to then have it touched and then hand it back, right? So with contactless, you tap your phone, right? The transaction is seamless, okay? It's almost, it's not almost, it's a social distancing transaction. That's what contactless is. So we provide that software. We even go another step further, guys. So do you, are you guys familiar with when you go up to a restaurant well, before this and you would see those scores A, B, C based on the cleanliness of the restaurant? Mm -hmm. So yep. that, that, was, that personally for me and my family was a big deciding point, that plus reviews whether or not we would eat at that restaurant, right? So what we did was we, we came out with a sticker that we provide the merchant right, when they sign up with Swipe for Free, that shows the consumer that this business is participating in social distancing by accepting contactless payments. On, in addition to that, we have icons that show contactless payments, that the business is using protective masks, they're using gloves, they're using hand sanitizing stations or hand sanitizer, and they're trying their best to have social distancing. So I think that ultimately makes the customer feel super comfortable in dealing with you because you have their health, okay, and in mind, and you're taking all necessary precautions to uh, uh, protect them and their employees. Guys, my wife, when she orders, the rare time she does, but when she orders food and say they don't do delivery and we, uh, she has to go get it, if she looks through your glass and sees you're not wearing a mask and you're not wearing gloves while you prepare that sushi, she will run away. She's not even, how about this, she's not even looking to go into your business. So in addition to the stickers we provide, guys, we also guide our merchants. I'll give everybody some free advice here. Make your consumers feel comfortable. They're slowly coming back, right? Open up your doors if you're in a warm climate. Okay, seasons are changing here in the Northeast. It's getting warm. Open your doors. Push your showcases or a table close to the door. Put a Wi-Fi or wireless terminal. If you have power, put a regular terminal on that table. Let them do a contactless transaction. Put up some plexiglass between you and the customers. Doesn't have to be fancy. We, we have these little dividers. Do whatever's necessary to make the consumer feel safe because guys, as consumers, we're judging businesses right now heavily to make us feel safe and healthy, right? So we help not only with eliminating, we give them signage. And this signage is also guidance to the business owner because guess what? If you, you're not practicing these things, I'm telling you now, your, your customers are watching you like a hawk, okay? So we also guide them in that direction too, and we give them the contactless so, technology. <clears throat> so the big question is, how many people are going to be walking into your business and telling you, how much credit card fees did you pay last year? Could be 20000 30000 40000 100000 big businesses, 500000 How many people are going to be walking in that front door and giving you the ability to get that money back? I just, that's my, that's my big question. And the answer is zero. I really don't even need you for that, uh, that answer because it's the second biggest bill you pay. And in this climate, this is absolutely integral. So first we started off when we first had you, and we were going to provide jobs to all the people that were out of work, out of the people that got laid off, and, that, and give them an, um, a way to hustle and make a lot of money. Now we come in and we say to you, and you're going to tell people now if you're a business owner or you take credit cards or you do internet business, whatever it is, if you take credit cards, you will never know the feeling of paying a credit card fee again. Okay? That is some powerful, powerful shit. And I'm going to say it right here, right now. If a merchant is listening and you don't do this, you, my friend, are a moron. Okay. And it's, it's really that simple. And this is not a sales pitch. This is, this is informational and, you know, funny, Brian, I know you, you handle, you handle the social and uh, Brian was telling me the other day, he could speak to it in a minute, but people, even though there's no, there's no fee to get involved, 
there's no there's no catch there's no nothing they still did and say oh are you selling a book are you selling a seminar i look me up i don't sell a fucking seminar i don't have a book i don't give a shit what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to inform the public the business people the entrepreneurs people availability to make money and if you're a merchant how to save your business potentially or just make more money to your point chris it's an incredible incredible opportunity and i think people need to pay attention and no i don't have a fucking book no i don't so um yeah. Bri brian uh, you want to speak to any any yeah, of that I, stuff I, definitely so you know like mark's saying if you're a merchant and you don't do this you know why but there's probably some merchants out there that are listening that own a few businesses that say i have a couple questions right so we've obviously been doing this on our own and building our own book of business the two most common questions we get, and Chris, you know, you could you could advise on these is one, is it legal? And two, am I gonna lose customers because I'm charging them a fee? So how do you respond to those two things? Well, for, first of all, uh, thanks to the great Senator, Senator Durbin, there's an amendment that allows you to have uh, the cash discounting program, okay? And it's not on a state to state level, it's nationally approved and nationally legal. So you can implement a cash discount in any state. A lot of people get confused with surcharging, and this is uh, not a surcharging platform. Uh, we do provide that also. That's another convo, but this is cash discounting is approved state to state, entire the entire nation, number one. Uh, we follow all the full compliancy. Uh, it's on our website, it's listed. We speak about it sometimes with the, you know, the, the additional non-cash charge, having the correct font size, having uh, having uh, the signage up at the point of entry and the point of sale all right so now the, the rebuttal that i give and you know and, and i'm just going to speak from the heart uh here before i even give you the typical response of the mass and all that how to save i'm in new york okay i drive down fifth avenue my heart hurts because merchants are going through a pandemic okay their business is hurt now there's rioting uh, I understand, but they're getting double, triple whammied. They were already, guys, what, what most people don't understand is prior to the pandemic with minimum wage, you see, I'm gonna go into my old pitches, minimum wage increases, okay? The, the cost was already skyrocketing to accept cards in general. So now it's, it's enough is enough. You're adding the pandemic, you're adding all this stuff. It's, it's deeper than that one customer who might actually complain, right? I think it's just the reality of, you got to stay in business. You have to feed your family. That's my heart. But now, okay, on the business aspect, let's go to business. Guys, if you're, if you're, if you're a grocery store or a pizzeria or any, any business, a car dealership, goodness, guys, the way they're suffering right now, okay? If you do the math, and I'm not going to even go too specific, on the loss of a sale, right, one sale versus the gross savings that you're enjoying from this program, and you knock that gross savings of, if you're doing 100 grand a month and you're, and you're saving three grand, right? And your net profit, your net profit on, on 100 grand, it's 10%, it's 10 grand. You would have to lose 30% of your business to not come out on top. And that's impossible. It is impossible for 30% of your customers to walk out of your business. Now guys, I'm gonna go an even bigger step further. I think like a merchant, I was a merchant, okay? I am a small business owner myself. Okay, we have software that when the consumer ultimately drives you crazy, okay, tortures you, there you, you, you click an X, you put in a password, of course, provided by, man, you know, to only management or ownership that you can get rid of the fee. And guess what? At that point, you will pay your regular processing fees like you're so programmed to do, and that's it. Now, Let's just say we go another step further. You try the program and for some weird reason, you don't like it. We are, we are a traditional credit card process, processing platform. That's what we've been doing since 2007. So guess what? We're going to take your existing statement, Bank of America, Wells, whoever. We're going to rip it apart. We're going to show you how they're getting you. And we're going to give you a reduction. That's all. Very simple. And you go right back to where you were with some savings. But remember, there's three choices. Charge the consumer, pay nothing. When you want to exit occasionally, you pay a little something, which you're already used to, which is at a reduced rate. Or third, you go back to the regular way. You gave it a shot and you save money anyway. So it's a, it, you know, I built it to be a no-lose situation. 
Because again, I think and I breathe and live like a merchant. So technically, gentlemen, you have nothing to lose by giving this a shot, okay? Except either going into the green, right? Or just making more money. Because everybody's business is very different. You know, I have friends that are thriving and I have friends that are out of business, guys. So I think you have to look at this at your particular, to a particular angle and see whether this is keeping you alive, keeping you in the green, or just keeping you in business, or you're just gonna make more money. So Chris, okay. let me let me tell me if this is tell me if this is accurate. So uh, I walk into a pizzeria and they say on the on it, uh, oh, ten dollar minimum because if they pay their credit card fees at ten dollars, they're, they're they're making very little margin yeah. according to them, right? Here, if somebody comes in and swipes a two dollar slice of pizza, it's two dollars and eight cents. Swipe all you like, right? Because if you swipe two dollars, you're going to get two dollars, correct? Yeah. And you know, it's funny the the rebuttal always is, well, I'm scared to lose business. Guys, how, how many times a day, ask a business owner, how much business a day do they lose by that 10 or $20 minimum sign, right? How many people say, get out of here. And then, you know, you give them, oh, go to the ATM. And how many people tell you, go fly a kite. I'm not going to the ATM yeah. to pay this crazy withdrawal fee and then get a penalty from Bank of America. Right. I mean, that's what I do. I'm never going to pay. Yeah. This is way worse. So I'll give you a quick big. story. We, we have uh, a friend of ours that we put it in his diner in, in Hoboken. And I, I don't think we even told you this. You know, he called us after he was in there for a few months, maybe four or five, six months. And he said, hey, I just did my 3,000 transaction. And he goes, I just wanted to let you know, I've only had one person ask me what the fee is for. And when I explained it, they happily paid it. So, and that was a, a place that we were a little concerned based on the, you know, the type of cards and, the demographics of the customers that maybe there'd be some concern over that fee. Zero. I'll take one out of 3000 any day of the week, 10 times over. Now he's yeah. right. But I want to do, I just want to just follow me through this little math. So, so you go into a pizzeria and they get $30,000. You're going to give them back at the end of the year. Right? So the, all their credit card fees, blah, 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 $30,000. This is the same guy who's afraid of losing some customers. Right? So if a slice of pizza costs, costs you 50 cents that would mean at thirty thousand dollars to break even not to lose money to break even you would have to lose sixty thousand slices of pizza let me tell you something that fucking guy he doesn't make sixty thousand slices of pizza okay so mathematically in my opinion it would be absolutely impossible to lose more slices than to go into the red am i am i getting this I mean, exactly, guys, you, you have, it's in, first of all, it's impossible to lose money, all right? But I think you have to look at this from your particular business type. I mean, if, if, you're, a, if you're a tow truck driver listening to this, I mean, <laughs> so I, I, I can't see, you, you know, somebody's on the side of the road, you're, you're conveniently pulling out this wireless terminal and you're telling this person who just blew out a tire, hey, you, I, you have cash on you for 150 bucks or if you pay with card, you know, there's a non-cash charge. I'm sorry, I, I'm not, I can't pay for your rewards. The customer's gonna give you a hug and a kiss, all right? On the same angle as if my boiler goes down or my air can, my central AC goes down and this guy comes in and says, hey, it's three grand, but check three grand, cash three grand, but if you pay with a credit card, do it, I'm sorry. There's another 4%. Again, great environment. Now, it makes sense in every environment, but I'm gonna use the diner and things like that. I know diners is like my parents, they go to their favorite diner, right? So I'll go a little deeper. If you help them by, when you do opt to pay with a credit or debit card, okay, to, to pay for your own fee, okay, you're keeping them in business, all right? If you really wanna support them, then you have to understand why they're doing it. They're doing it so that they can keep the price that you're used to paying for that omelet, and you get that delicious omelet from your favorite diner. They're trying to right. survive. Now, if you want to support them and not give them a headache, pay with cash because you will pay the regular cash price. So it is up to you whether you go with convenience of a credit or debit card to then get rewarded back. So guys, that's a good angle now that I'm thinking. You're not losing anything as the consumer because you're getting it right back in airline miles, even though we can't go anywhere. But anyway, right. you're getting a deposit of cash back. So in essence, you're helping this business owner survive while being reimbursed to yourself. So your ultimate net cost is zero, right? And you're helping your local favorite restaurants and businesses. Guys, they need a boost right now. 
They need all the support that they can get to reopen. They're fearful to support their families. They want to get back. We all want to get back to reality, okay? Mm -hmm. And the reality is that we need to implement Swipe for Free to get back to normal to survive financially. Awesome. I totally agree. I mean, it, this is to me, this is an absolute no brainer. If you're a merchant and you're listening and you don't look into this by going to uh, swipe the number four, swipe for free.com, you got to be out of your bird. I'm telling you now. Um, anything else that, uh, anything else that we, uh, do we miss anything, Chris? I have a, I have a quick question for you, Chris. Um, so while, while you guys were talking, I ran, uh, got my, my credit card, uh, statements real quick um i couldn't find them uh you know mark and i aren't like brian like we don't you know brian doesn't even uh you know do his he doesn't even have to look at his checking account he says he's got so much cash but i have to go through all my records and stuff all the time the good life yeah uh, what um for a credit a person who's accepting credit cards a merchant uh what are the what are the things that they should look at that they're getting charged that they don't know about what are those what are those things that are you know are really adding those percentages on that, you know, just aren't vis very visible. All right. If you, if you want to get an encyclopedia out and start on page one, um, a, a blank <laughs> encyclopedia. So guys, remember, uh, Carmine, this entire building structure was designed for the merchant to never understand what the hell they're paying. Mm. There is hundreds of line items, authorizations, transactions, Okay, all, uh, offline trends. What, what, if I, I barely, after 13 years, really understand every single part, okay? So if you really want to know, <laughs> why do we teach? We teach the merchant the most basic thing in the world, right? Take the total amount you paid, not only at the end of the month, but also daily, combine it, divide that by your total processing volume, and you will get an effective rate. Okay. That will tell you three and a half, four, four and a half, five, now, here comes the saddest part. The smaller the merchant is, meaning they do 10000 a month in credit card processing volume, 5000 3000 they're getting murdered, okay? It is not three or four or five. It's like 10. Wow. Because, yeah, because they have all these monthly minimums and, oh, guess what? Through the pandemic, you didn't process inactivity fees. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not blaming these companies. You know, this is what we do. It's algorithms. They bill it. That's all. It's a billing system. You know, your cell phone's still going to get billed, right? If you use it or not. So it hurts. And the little people are hurting. Now watch this. The way that these laws came into place was not, was slowly pushed by the small business owner, but it was really pushed by the Walmarts and the Home Depots uh -huh. of the world. Now yeah. imagine this. They were pissed off. But they pay, they have exclusive pricing, low dirt cheap pricing, because they go direct to the source. They pay maybe 1%. And imagine they're the ones that were super pissed off. Wow. And they're the ones who started this movement. But the regular people like us, the regular merchants, and when I say regular, 150 locations of something, we're paying 2 3 4%. So these people are pissed about 1%. What we're doing is we're giving the ability to every single or size business enjoy the savings. I have calls. It's funny. I can have a call with a person right now that owns 400 locations of something. And then one of my sales reps can come in and bring in a bodega. It doesn't matter. Bodega deserves to save just as big as Home Depot and Walmart need to save everybody needs to save that's mm -hmm. all yeah. pretty simple so but, i can i i can go into the building and, and the playing of the games and the whole hey guess what it's been your 13 months you've been with some you know bank of america well why did my rates go up because the, their systems are told and designed to raise at particular times of the year why is it that hmm, december which is the peak processing volume month christmas all the holidays, Hanukkah, everything, right? Why is it that I pay an annual fee? Oh, uh, hmm, you're not going to complain that particular month because your volume spiked. These, this is geniuses that I respect that sit around and they designed the billing systems. Yeah. Go look at your cell phone bill and tell me what the hell are you looking at? Another group of geniuses sat around and made that. So 
You're never going to understand it. You're lucky if you understand your effective rate. If you get that effective rate, you can figure out it's why for free. You're going to say goodbye to it. That's the yeah. math you need to understand. You're never going to get the statement, guys. Yeah. You're just yeah. never going to get it. You know, so you know, the math is zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the fucking yeah. math is zero. You yeah. gotta, you well, my count to zero. You know what I? You know what I love about this, Mark and Brian, is that. You know, Chris is in this business for years and he chose to spend his own money and time to fix this. That's what, you know, that's what I love about this is that not only is it going to save me money, save all these people money, but he did this because obviously you could tell anyone that's listening to this. I mean, Chris is trying to change the system, right? I mean, he's emotional about this when he's talking about it. I love and, I mean, not, not only is he passionate, but you know, they, you don't just snap your fingers as a traditional processor. And all of a sudden you can offer a swipe for free cash discounting program. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And these guys brought in big guns from major places to make sure that not only did they implement this, but it is flawless compliant and it helps the merchants. And it's, it's a, it's a great thing. I mean, this is, they're helping businesses. Yeah, guys, I mean, I, I started this. This was in full motion. This was developed in 2015, went into full motion in, in early 2016. Um, that's like saying uh, we started the, uh, the credit card processing industry in 1970. Cash discounting at that point, we were the only company doing it, okay? Because we, I like to feel that I am a pioneer in this because I went with my heart and my mind and I knew Okay, I, obviously I didn't predict the pandemic. I, even then I just knew that at a, a certain point, the merchants cannot continue to pay more and more and more while these card companies are battling each other out with their money. So I knew I had to make a change for and another show, we could get into all the other angles of why I had to make this change. Um, you know, I didn't wanna run my business in a deceptive manner. Okay, so mm -hmm. I knew either I had to exit it or I had to make a change. And with a, with a, lot, of, a lot of hard work, and I always believe in good luck, um, we were able to implement this program with full compliancy. Uh, so yeah. Supreme Court, you know, came in at a certain point and said, hey, if you don't allow the, the, the merchant to have a price that, you know, that is different on the cash credit versus cash, you're not allowing them to have their right of freedom of speech. So I think that's another big thing if any of the listeners want to look up. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled it. If you don't allow the merchants to do this, you're not allowing them to practice their freedom of speech. So uh, I'm not a lawyer. I, I never give legal advice, but that is our, our Supreme Court. Well, you know what the most imp impressive thing about this whole thing is, Chris, and why you're so passionate is because you were a merchant. I was a merchant. Exactly. I've seen those credit card bills. I, and I did really, really good volume when I owned retail. And uh, it is just absolutely incredible. And you, you can't really judge a man until you walk the mile in his shoes. And uh, you've been walking miles as a merchant. So now that you have the opportunity to help all the other merchants and allow them to get a leg up, then the pandemic came. And, and, and created all of this negativity. But you, you, were doing, you were doing good deeds before the pandemic. Now it's almost a necessity. So it's a swipe for the number four, swipeforfree.com. Go on there, fill out, the, uh, fill out the application and somebody from Chris's company will, uh, will get back to you. Um, also, let's not forget Brian, it's uh, postedsocial.com. He's the uh, guru of uh, social media. And uh, Carmine is inventorslaunchpad.com. And uh, if you want to submit an idea or what have you, it's uh, markportney.com. And uh, Chris, I mean, um, incredible, incredible, incredible shit. Incredible. Yeah, guys, thank you thank so you. much for having me back. Uh, re the reality is I, I, I can't stop saying that name because you guys say it how it is. It's just the reality is. All right. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. Chris, so, thank nice, you so guys. much. So great. I mean, that, the good part about this, like Mike, Mark and Brian, is like when, when someone comes on with a platform like this, you know, we like to try to pick it apart. And really, this is one of those systems that wherever you turn, it's, it works. It works for everyone. I, I love it. And it, what I really love about it at this time in history, it's helping so many people, you know, just climb out and make some more extra money, which is super, super important. I think it's great.
Yeah, and I just want to say one thing. The people who are, uh, are writing to Brian, Brian's picking it up, is like, what's for sale? Are you giving a seminar or a book or something? Listen, man, do all the Googling you want. I don't give a shit. This is as real as rain. And if if you don't do it, that's on you. Fuck you. But, uh, but, but, but and again, uh, now you got me saying it, Chris. The reality is, the, rea- <laughs> the reality is, wh- this podcast is all about talking business, helping entrepreneurs, helping businesses. And if this guy, Chris, is not the poster child for saving your fucking business, then something is really wrong and we should stop doing this fucking podcast. Yeah. Really. Totally agree. So. Totally agree. This is a perfect example of what, we, what this podcast is doing and what it should be. I, I totally agree. No, no doubt about it. All right. We are going to close up the show. Again, Chris, thank you so much for being on. Uh, swipe for free dot com get in touch with them or of course get in touch with brian scan the posted social.com it's a awesome system awesome platform and definitely will help you the way for myself carmen denisco for mr mark portney for brian scanlon we thank you for listening today and we'll catch you next time on reality is you all take care <laughs>